So this is the second part of a series on the coaching process and how performance analysis fits into that. Uh, it's based on the presentation I gave at the Level 3 AFL coaching course uh, towards the end of 2010. And if you remember the first part or if you've seen it of this series dealt with uh, the coaching process analysis and just some of the key principles without getting too specific or technical into the types of uh, software you can use um, and the IT requirements is more about some philosophies, some principles that you need to consider more so as a coach and um, looking to apply uh, performance analysis uh, as part of your coaching process. And so today the second part gets a bit more specific talking about match analysis and examples of using sports code probably being the world's yeah, lead or premier video sports video analysis solution so looking at ways you can use that for match analysis giving some examples of how we've used it specifically in Australian football but these examples fly over to most team sports so sports code 101 101 sorry so I think the real power of sports code is its flexibility and the way it's been designed is you can mould it to suit uh, whatever needs or purposes you have, whatever you want to measure. So what you input and what you extract from it, both in terms of numerical data and video, uh, can be tailored to whatever you deem is important. And, that, and that's a key point, is depending on your game style um, and your philosophies on, on your playing systems and all those sorts of things, is what, what's important to making those things work differs. So you need to be able to measure that and Sports Code gives you the best opportunity uh, to do that. Along with other products these days have a similar approach and framework to how you're able to code. So the flexibility of it is key. The second point that I think has a real base understanding as a coach is understanding how instances and labels work because if you have an understanding and a grasp of that you've got a real foundation to build on and to get some real power out of the system. So how do, how do those things work? So as a quick video overview, here is just an example of creating uh, what's called a code window and being able to create instance buttons and label buttons um, that then will appear on the timeline. So at the moment down the bottom here on the timeline, I've got uh, a row called center bounce. Okay, so the instance buttons will create um, events in that row that every time there's a center bounce, we click on this center bounce instance button and it creates an event at that point in the timeline, okay? So that's an instance. What we can also do is create label buttons as well. So you can see here the buttons in the orange, they're all labels uh, or descriptors that can go into each instance to give it more context, if you like, or explain more about what happened during that event or that instance. So we have a center bounce, but in Australian football, the labels or the descriptors that we want to add in might relate to who won the clearance, so who won possession of the ball and which way did it go, and was that effective, that clearance. And it can be, like I said at the start, with the flexibility and, and the ability to mould sports code as you'd like, it, you can create whatever labels you like. So I've got a label here labelled our spaghetti play. Now that's not a standard footy term, obviously, but it might be a certain set play that happens at the centre bounce. So you can label every time that's happened, every instance of a centre bounce where your team ran the spaghetti setup or structure or play, you can label that, which as I'll get into shortly, allows you to provide great insight into how effective that is. So we've got these label buttons as well as our instance button now. And if we start coding and at the next centre bounce, so we hit our centre bounce instance button and now as it unfolds, we're also going to click on whatever labels might be relevant. So there was no clearance there, so none of these labels came into effect. You can see down here on the timeline that the third instance of the centre bounce has been created. Okay, the game's going on. Here's the next centre bounce in the game. We hit our instant centre bounce button. And now the opposition team has got a clearance. We hit that label. And let's say we base our effectiveness on whether they maintain possession. They do, so we hit an effective clearance. And we might also say in that example that it was, we, had, we ran our spaghetti uh, setup or structure for that centre bounce. So we've added some labels in there. So now if we come down in the timeline, 
can see that for this instance now that there are labels appearing in the instance as well, okay? So on this fourth centre bounce, we've got opposition clearance, it's hard to read, I know, effective clearance, and it was the spaghetti play. So there's just a real quick snapshot of creating instances and labels uh, in your timeline to help you analyse the game. So if you can get a grasp on how that works, uh, you're off to a really good start. Most coaches I know understand the idea of instances and you get a row of similar events like centre bounce or um, it might be shots on goal or it could be counter attacks. But understanding how labels work as well obviously provides so much more information. So, so get a handle on those two um, and you're away. What about how we get information out now? So we understand how we can input and code the events. What about how we extract that information, be it from a numerical point of view or video? Have a look at this. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is. But it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? So, what is the Matrix? Obviously, we're talking in a bit different context to the movie here, but the matrix in sports code is, is really your avenue and your vehicle and your tool for extracting out the information. Okay, there's sports code off from their website, their definition of it. But your ability to use the matrix to extract meaningful information is potentially really, really powerful. So, examples. Here's our centre bounce row with all our instances, centre bounces with them labelled appropriately. We create a matrix. And what we see here in simple terms is just a frequency count. So we've got our centre bounce row here and it just tells me for each of those labels that we put in, how often do they occur in that row? So how many centre bounces do we have? Eight. So eight centre bounces, three times we labelled it as an AFC got the clearance four times as opposition got the clearance. So let's just put them together. Okay, and we can, so there's a bit of information. By double clicking, we play those instances. So we can play those three instances where we won the clearance, for example, or the four where the opposition won the clearance. Okay, it can be as simple as that. And then you as the coach obviously identify, perhaps in the video clips, what was working or not working. However, if we want to dig a bit deeper, Let's say, for example, we want to know um, about our effective clearances. So we had three clearances and we also want to say effective. We can drag and drop up here and know about not only our clearance, but whether it was an effective clearance. We get the total here. So combining those two things, we get one. So if, maybe, if you remember, we had three clearances. One out of those three only has been effective. Now, you might have some uh, benchmarks on what could be what's an acceptable rate. You might be after 50%, so one in two. So this would be below that threshold. We can also, talking about being able to label whatever we like, if we look at our spaghetti play, so we ran it four times. Four times we've run the spaghetti play. Um, of those eight centre bounces, how many times did we get the clearance? So it's our preferred play, so drop it up here. Spaghetti play and an AFC clearance, only once, okay? So in here, only once out of those four times did we get the clearance. So something's obviously not going right, right here. So we can look at those events. Probably what we'd want to do is if we only got it once, let's have a look what the opposition got it. Three times. Let's have a look at the three times the opposition got it from these spaghetti plays. What's going on? Are we setting up incorrectly? Are we not reading the Ruckman uh, appropriately or how the opposition have set up in there as well? Okay, so there's an example of uh, using something that's really specific to your structure or your game style, being able to analyse that 
um, from a numerical point of view to red flag where it's maybe things are going right, wrong, sorry, or hopefully right, and then drill down into the video to get more information and use your experience and insight as a coach to identify exactly what the cause uh, of the problem was. So there you go, instances, labels, using the matrix to extract the information. That is really the core, if you can, if you can understand that and start to apply that in, in your coaching, um, you really enhance what you're doing and you're getting a lot of the power out of sports code. Just some other things to consider, other functionalities of sports code and other software. Databasing, which basically allows you to um, combine instances or events across multiple games and different timelines so it could be your own games could be opposition and there's different ways apart from databasing of doing this but it allows you to put to track um, results or video over longer periods of time rather than just a single game and that's where obviously where trends appear is is over multiple games and sometimes across a season as well so being able to um, combine and put all that information and that coding together um, means there's more power in what you're then able to extract. So an example of this is looking at your game style and what works in your game style and what doesn't. So what's the probability of, in our case here, let's talk about we counter-attack out of our defence. What's the probability that we get the ball all the way through to our forward end, our attacking 50, okay, based on certain methods of moving the ball out of defence. So we've set up for a few years we've coded exactly the same way how we how we uh, exit the ball out of our defense based on different ball movement patterns directions and speed i've just called them method one two three four five six obviously we know uh, exactly what these are and we can so now we can pull out these results so from the matrix maybe put them into excel we can graph and know that based on uh, a few um, key indicators, the blue bars representing what percentage of our total rebound or counter-attack was this type of method. So method one is the most common, method six the least common to occur. The red bar, what are our chances of getting the ball in our forward 50 based on this method of exit our defence? So our, our, our best chance or probability of the ball going inside 50 is if we use method three. And similarly, to get even the ultimate result, a shot on goal, method two and three are pretty similar. So straight away, we can see based on different methods, how we move the ball out of defence, what gives us the best chance of, of uh, gaining the most territory and ideally generating shots on goal. So it might be that the method three yields our best results, but our game style, maybe as we're seeing here, 31% is more around method one. Maybe we need to try and incorporate more of method three into that. Ideally, your game style will be around maybe method two, three, and four, because these give you the best results. Okay, so, you can, so that's an example, and we've tracked that over an entire season, so that's from 2008 coding and databasing over an entire season to get that information out. Really important when you're making decisions at the end of the year in particular about your game style, what needs changing, what worked, what didn't, okay? Because you, you might have a rough feel, but you won't have as good an insight as these numbers can provide you. And then the follow-on from that, if you do it across multiple years, is you can track it year to year. So here, this same sort of thing, this is tracking what percentage of our rebounds from defence get to our forward 50, but it, instead it's comparing 2009 in the blue to 2008, okay? So same thing along the lines, based on each method, what were our probability of, of, of that movement being or method being successful from one year to the next? So method three in 09 jumped up a bit compared to 08. Method four dropped down compared to 08. Now this might be, there was a certain trend in the game that started happening that, uh, that we're aware of um, that I think had a big influence on this. So from season to season you can start to pick up trends not only in your own team perhaps but how opposition are starting to defend and what defensive actions are occurring across the league. So that's an example of pulling that all together and the insights it can give you. Just going along more, the, the other power, so that's more the, the analysis or analytical side of sports code and the p tremendous uh, power and application it's got there. Just also 
it's just a great teaching resource too. Obviously, being a vision library and being able to database certain um, vision is it's it's great as a teaching resource. You can pull out example clips and just database them. I've created a um, a database that's just all about forward line movement and principles. So any time I come across, whether it's our team or opposition, an example of a good forward movement, it might be using space behind, I'll database that. So over four or five years, I've got a number of clips that are great teaching clips to show players um, about certain principles of forward line play. And you could do that for any aspect of your game, defensive principles as well. So it's a, it can be used, obviously, video is a great teaching resource. Sports Code enables you to do that really well as well. And finally, um, from a case study point of view, I know the Richmond Footy Club in 2010 gave all their players access to Sports Code and they actually had to code their own game using a certain coding um, framework or structure. So they had to look for certain instances and code those. So, there's examples now where players are getting involved in using sports code as well. It's another philosophical decision for you as a coach if you think you, you would want to go down that path. But involving the players uh, in that analysis process can have some benefits uh, if you can sell them on the value of it, I believe. So the, the last thing I talk, talked about when I gave this presentation is from this section, from what you've just seen today, Try and put down one or two things that you're, you've learnt today um, or picked up that you're actually going to put into action in your coaching in the, in the short term, in the next two or three months. One or two things, if you can actually action those in your coaching, um, hopefully then this will have been some benefit for you. So that's all I've got today. Uh, thanks for having a look. If you've got any questions, uh, comments, please feel free to put them in below or you can contact me and get in touch through any of those methods. Thanks a lot.